We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. <coughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. In search of many sources of income, one avenue that young people can try is farming. And farming is like any other business. That is why here in Shamba Shape Up, we will show you just how to do it. There are many young farmers around the Ngong Hills trying hard to make money by supplying Nairobi. Like all the farmers though, they face many problems. We are at Dorothy's farm to lend a hand. Dorothy lives on the farm with her parents and her daughter. She's very keen to improve her farm where she has chickens, rabbits, cattle and several different crops. Dorothy, you've taken us around your farm, you've seen how well you've done, you've seen the different crops that you have. When did you begin farming? Like 10 years ago. Wow, what were you doing before? I was in college, then I went, did some work somewhere, then I came back. Mm -hmm. I settled on farming because where I was employed, the salary was small. Mm -hmm. And I had seen my parents doing it before, mm -hmm. so I said, why not come and do what my parents have been doing? How has the experience been? It has been awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. You are a proud farmer. I am very, very, very <laughs> proud. Yeah. I'm doing it as a business. I've gone to supermarkets and I've, they have been asking for orders, but now I've found it's not being able, my, what I have right now, it's not able to sustain what the orders in the supermarkets that I get. What are the main problems are you going through? I'm not, I don't have enough water. And you have cows? How many liters? The two cows, they're producing three and a half liters. Both of mm -hmm. them? Both of them, in one day. That is something we should look yeah. into. <laughs> yeah, do you have chickens, so how many do you have? Right now I don't have. Two months ago I, I, I had them. Mm -hmm. But for now I'm, I don't have them because the market itself is bad. Once I have them, I, I rear them for like two months. Uh, according to other farmers, they tell me we should be selling from five weeks to six weeks. Right. Yeah, because I, I prefer broilers than layers. Well, that's why we are here. You're welcome. To make sure yeah. that you're shipped up <laughs> and you're going to do farming as a business. <laughs> Dorothy has been using a room in the house to raise her broiler chickens. But she has a good big chicken house on the farm which it seems to be using as a kitchen, a rabbit hatch, and a store. Dorothy. Yeah. <coughs> now, tell us about your chickens. I used to have 500, 300, 200. And now you have two. <laughs> so the numbers keep reducing. Yeah, they what? are reducing. What's going on? They take long before I sell them. How do you sell them? I don't sell them at once. Mm -hmm. I, if I find somebody who wants 10 pieces, mm -hmm. I give 10, 15, 20. And have you always kept your chickens in here? This way I put, them, I put up the brooder. Mm -hmm. And then I transfer them to a bigger house. But the 100 that I had, I reared them here. In this mm -hmm. space in here? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. It seems that Dorothy has had some problems with her chicken farming. What do you think the problem is? <laughs> my, my ventilation is poor. Or the, the feeding or the water. So Dorothy, according to what you've told us and uh, according to the rule book of chicken farming, uh, has she broken any rules? Well, all of them, but she was honest. <laughs> she was honest. Yeah. You are honest. You are very honest. Dorothy knows what the problems with her chickens might be. But to be sure, we asked an expert to check it out properly. Farmers normally start with a few chicks going upwards. The biggest issue is the ventilation. The one which is bringing all the other problems you are, get, you are getting, mm -hmm. including the diseases and the slow growth. So there must be free circulation of air mm -hmm. in and out. Mm -hmm. The chickens died because, probably because of two reasons. One of them is the ammonia, which is coming from the litter down there. Mm -hmm. When it's caked above the, the litter, there's ammonia which is building up mm -hmm. beneath it. 
So when it, the, the ammonia comes up, it irritates mm -hmm. the highs and the nose of the bats, mm -hmm. getting uh, these blocked airways. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing which may have caused the death is coccidiosis. Coccidiosis is a disease which affects the mouth, stomach and intestines of the birds and can be caused by bad hygiene and poor ventilation. A sign that your chickens have this problem is a red area. Good feeds are not enough for your chickens to grow well. Good management is also very important. Doro, I've seen some birds here. Yeah. How old are they? Those ones, they have two months. No, those birds, to me, I've seen one one of them, which to me was looking like it's one month, mm -hmm. and the other one was looking like two weeks old. You might be feeding good feet, mm -hmm. but then, as I said, when the conditions or the management is not very good, then you will not get the results. What mm -hmm. you need to do is to combine both good management mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. good feet. Mm -hmm. They are chicks. Mm -hmm. You put them on uh, Fugo Fast Grow Starter Mash mm -hmm. or Fugo Fast Grow Starter Crumbs. Crumbs. So you I can cannot... start with either. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You feed them for three weeks uh -huh. until they are 21 days old. Uh -huh. After three weeks, gradually change the feed to Fugo Fast Grow Finisher Mash. Mostly what I do after the 21 days, I start the finisher. Yes. So is so I should continue with the starter mixing with the finisher. Yes. For three, four days. Three, four days. That's what we call gradually. Uh -huh. Because these feeds have different energy levels. Uh -huh. So if you bring uh, together the finisher, the bus will get stress. Okay. They'll be stressed, uh -huh. and before now they start adapting. Uh -huh. That's where now you get, uh, you find out that they even now de delaying because they take time to adapt to this feed. Uh -huh. Then you give now the finisher and deal uh -huh. the market. My chickens were taking, they take like from eight weeks. That's when I start selling. From uh, eight weeks. From eight weeks. Mm. And the weight that they have, the, for the first time that I start slaughtering them, mm. they weigh from 1.2 to 1.3 which is not good, right? That one is not very good. Mm -hmm. Of course, you'll have spend a lot of money yeah. mm -hmm. and even time. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So with the 1.2 kgs, uh -huh. that one you can be getting from the fourth week. Now, do you remember how many chickens you had? How much feed they, they, they took? Do you remember how much you sold? What were the cost? What the profit? Any losses? To tell you the truth, honestly, Naomi. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't keep records. No, Dorothy, mm -hmm. if uh, you don't keep records, mm -hmm. then you are not in business. Mm -hmm. For you to be in business, mm -hmm. you need to have proper records to show you the direction which you are heading to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can keep very simple records. In those records, mm -hmm. you need to include the number of birds, day old, you, you bought, mm -hmm. and by how much. Uh -huh. Each chick cost like 60 bob, mm -hmm. that one cost you how much? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. You need to have a record mm -hmm. of the feeds you buy. How many bags of the Fugo Fast Grow Starter Mash you bought at how much? Mm -hmm. How many bags of the finisher you bought at how much? Mm -hmm. Then you also need to record how much they are consuming per day. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. you need to have a record of the mortality. How many they are dying? If they die two today, you subtract from the, the original number. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. you also need to be recording the weights on a weekly basis mm -hmm. to see whether you are heading towards the right direction. Mm -hmm. If the weights, you're not getting the weights, then you get to know. You get it from the experts why you're not getting the weights. Mm -hmm. Then you rectify that. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and then you need to have a record mm -hmm. of how many bats you sold mm -hmm. and you sold at how much. Mm -hmm. You do your calculation and see whether you made money or mm -hmm. you made loss. loss. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. so records are very mm -hmm important uh -huh. which you need to start today mm -hmm. okay. on once okay, okay. Do that. yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> while we are taking care of the chickens there was something very important happening a soil test without testing your soil you'll never be able to feed your crops correctly the mobile soil testing lab from soil cares came by to do the test and they left us with the results Though the results tell us how to fix her soil, we asked Mia to give us a few fertilizer tips for her tomatoes and her vegetables, which are doing very badly. So Paul, you've had a look at the results and you know what the problem is. Dorothy Shamba has a 
raw percentage of nitrogen in the soil to we'll try and raise a little bit the levels of nitrogen. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, still the potassium levels are raw. Mm -hmm. So when he when she is planting some fruiting crops, she will need to add some fertilizer that will still supplement that low potassium level. Mm -hmm. Yes, she will have to have a, a good fertilizer regime. Uh -huh. so that she can be able to maintain the, the good condition of the soil. So what do you have for us that you know we can solve this problem? We have a fertilizer for planting, which has uh, 39% of nitrogen, 5% of phosphorus, and 5% of uh, potassium. That will be used in planting both the tomatoes and the vegetables she is doing in the farm. When she will be transplanting, she will use uh, an NPK, that will be very suitable for top dressing tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But when we'll be top dressing uh, the managus and the sukuma plus the spinach, she will need uh, a fertilizer which has more nitrogen. And that's why I've brought her urea, which has got a uh, 46% nitrogen. Which one would be the best and at what time would we be putting it? We do not use CN to plant. CN is a top dressing fertilizer. The levels of nitrogen in CAN are quite low, and that's why we have decided to change from CAN to urea for the leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. like the spinach and the managus. Yeah, so is there anything the farmers can do, anything else the farmers can do to improve their soil? Yes. We are encouraging our farmers to continuously be using the organic manure mm -hmm. so that they can improve the soil health. Mm -hmm. and some soil physical conditions like the water holding capacity mm -hmm. right. and it enhances the the microbial activities in the soil right yes to plant vegetables first select the fertilizer recommended in your soil test for dorothy this is npk then mix well decomposed manure with the soil add one bottle cup or 10 grams of the fertilizer every 30 centimeters for each plant mix the fertilizer with the manure and the soil and plant the seedlings. Dorothy will need to top dress with urea as the vegetables grow, as her nitrogen levels are very low. With a small investment Dorothy made testing her soil, she can expect much better production. Your soil is a lifeline of your shamba and it's very important to know its condition. This is only the beginning of successful farming. More after the break. Coming up. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. Knowing the right amount of fertilizer and chemicals to use will make your shamba give you even more. But that's not all. There's still more. Let's keep planning. After doing a soil test and using manure and the right fertilizer at planting and to top dress, your crops should be doing well. But there are always pests and diseases to look out for. We all use agrochemicals to try to control these problems, but we need to make sure we are buying the right thing from the right place. The Agrochemicals Association has come to help Dorothy avoid fake agrochemicals. The AAK is a group of all the pest control product suppliers in the country. Our main objective of being together is to assist our farmers to get genuine products. Mm -hmm. All members of the industry must meet the requirements of the law. And the law we follow is Pest Control Products Act. Let's go down to the farmers like Dorothy here. How yeah. can Dorothy be able to detect genuine products? We ask them to look for that clean supply chain, which starts from manufacturer, comes to distributors, who are mostly our members. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to agrovet outlets who are not our members, but we have put in place what we call accreditation scheme, mm -hmm. whereby those who are not our members, who want to follow our code of practice, they can come and sign up with us, and then we give them what we call accreditation certificate, plus uh, a window sticker, which shows that this shop 
is accredited to the industry, to AAK, and also the regulator, Pest Control Products Act. You can't be our member if you are not licensed with the government. So now, what steps should Dorothy here take when getting her products to use in the farm? What important steps should farmers take to make sure they get the real good product, genuine and not a counterfeit? Very good. The first thing you must do, please talk to professionals. They will give you proper advice on where to buy these chemicals and what to buy. In our website, which I'll put a uh, all the dealers of agrochemicals who are doing genuine business. So if you want to get genuine products, go to those ones. Mm -hmm. So where do you buy, you buy your fungicides and insecticides from? I go to agrochemists. Chem mm -hmm. When somebody comes to your farm to sell to you, you should ask him whether it's accredited mm -hmm. to the industry mm -hmm. and to PCPV. Mm -hmm. Anyone who is accredited by the industry will have an identity card, which they should carry with them at all times. I see farmers buying from uh, hawkers in, in a van or in a, in a car, you know, car is open and they're selling chemicals. Yeah. Are, do, are they also accredited? They Should the farmer also ask for an ID from them? Yes, those are the counterfeiters. <laughs> those are the counterfeiters. Those who come actually without branded vehicles. Mm -hmm. The branded vehicles are no problem. Mm -hmm. Those are with the dresses and all that. Yeah. Those who come without branded vehicles, mm -hmm. those are the ones who sell counterfeit products. And normally when they are selling to you, they are really always in a hurry. You find them at marketplaces, they open their boot, they sell, those are the counterfeiters. Many farmers use old chemical containers for carrying water or milk. This is not a good idea, as the containers will always have some of the chemical inside. Whatever is left there, when you use it for water, because some people use it for carrying water yeah. or carrying milk, mm -hmm. you still go to your system. Yeah. And the problem we have with this product is that uh, the effect will not come immediately. The effect will come later in your life. We've done the chickens, the soil, and learned about buying real agrochemicals. Now, these cows look like they need some work too. Dorothy, yeah. what do you feed your cows with? There's napier grass, uh -huh. there's grass, grass in Yasingomo, the skumas. Yeah. So there is a time that you feed only skuma wiki yeah. to the cows. Yeah. That brings the issue of kill poisoning. What's that? A condition mm. that inhibits either production, growth, or even body maintenance. Dorothy has three cows, two cows in calf, and a very stunted heifer. It's very good I mean, for a farmer to expect a calf. But the best thing you should know is you start preparing for the milk production mm -hmm. before it calves down. Mm -hmm. A process we call steaming up. Steaming up mm -hmm. is a process in which one, you dry the cow. The drying of the cow means mm -hmm. you stop milking the cow mm -hmm. two months before it calves down. This will help the cow to prepare itself. One, for calving down. Secondary, to prepare its under and the milk system of the cow mm -hmm. to mature up and also to have a relaxing period such that the cow will be in a position to produce more milk. Mm -hmm. you, the process of steaming up is a process in which you increase the amount of feed, mm -hmm. you increase the quality of the feed, mm -hmm. and also increase the quantity of the mineral supplements which you are giving into this cow. Mm -hmm. Because right now, it has another life in it that it needs to feed, and also it is preparing itself to calve down. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend one, mm -hmm. you feed it on Macric Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah. Macric Plus mm -hmm. is meant for cows such a cow that is already to be dried, or a cow that is dried, yeah? Mm -hmm. This Macric Plus will help it to make its body maintenance, mm -hmm. to maintain the calf, and to enable the calf to grow so fast and so big. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're feeding on Macric Plus to a already in calf cow, mm -hmm. like this one which has also been, been dried, mm -hmm. you require to give at least seven tablespoons per day. Four tablespoons in the morning, three tablespoons in the evening. Mm -hmm. Or else, you give it a drip time. 
in conjunction with Maclic Plus, mm -hmm. I would also recommend mm -hmm. that we give it a good ration of protein supplement. Mm -hmm. Combined with Maclic Plus, we shall not have the cases of dystochia. Dystochia is a problem where the cow has a difficulty giving birth to the calf. This can cause the calf to die and can also kill the cow. Cooper Clagorod, you shall also give it in terms of one glass for this cow and also you give it at least two kilograms of dairy meat. You combine with that ration formulation, you shall not have the problem of one, dystochia. Secondly, you shall not have the problem of what we call milk fever. Milk fever is a problem in which the cow, when it comes down, is not in a position to start on its own because of weak, weak legs. Eh? Yeah. But for the cow that was, that, has, that was served four months ago, mm -hmm. to enable it in a position to build on its milk production, because at least also at that stage it will be giving you a lot of milk, mm -hmm. at the same time to help it also maintain the calf that is inside, mm -hmm. I would recommend we give it a mac amino supplement called Macric Super. Uh -huh. Macric Super is a mineral supplement mm -hmm. meant for dairy cows. Mm -hmm. We shall give at least a quarter of it mm -hmm. to the cow, it will feed on it until it is satisfied. Mm -hmm. After that, mm -hmm. you can measure allowed 8 tablespoons mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. That is 4 tablespoons in the morning and mm -hmm. 4 tablespoons in the evening. Mm -hmm. After that, you add 60 grams for any 5 kg of milk added to its production. Mm -hmm. Mineral supplements can be given to a cow freely, as the cows will choose how much to eat. But protein supplements like Cooper Cooler Gold need to be measured carefully. This one should be on less measures, mm -hmm. and the best measure is one glass that is allowed 200 grams per cow per day. After a cow increases from 5 liters and above, you add 200 grams per every 5 kgs of milk produced. Mm -hmm. So. If your cows are giving you less than 5 liters of milk every day, give each cow one glass full of protein supplements every day. If your cow then increase production to over 5 liters per day, for every extra 5 liters, add another glass or 200 grams of protein supplements every day. With that, we expect increase in milk production. Mm -hmm. And within the next 6 months, mm -hmm. I expect this herd to have increased the one and also the milk production to go beyond 20 to 30 liters. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow, is all she can say. Dorothy's cows are both in calf, but she said it took a long time for the cows to conceive. Problems of conceiving and silent heats are linked to low minerals levels in the cows. Have you ever seen any signs of heat on these cows? What I've noted with them, yeah. there is um, milkers and yeah. bloodish. A blood is discharged. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. That is a science to, share, to tell you that that cow mm -hmm. came on heat three days before. Three days before. Three days before. With John's advice, Dorothy can improve the health of her cows and their milk production. If she keeps good records for her cows, as well as her chickens and crops, she'll be able to track how much money she's making and will soon be able to see the effects of using good minerals and supplements on her milk profits. We've given Dorothy a lot of advice, which she plans to put in good use. And it's now time to gather the family together and say goodbye. Dorothy and Muse, we are very happy to have been here. We've done a lot of work here. How did you find the ship up today, Muse? I found it really very interesting and there was a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. I thought that I knew some things until I met many of your experts from the Shamba Shape Up. What about you, Dorothy? I thought I knew some things, still I found myself knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, but at least I've gotten something mm -hmm. from the whole experience. So now you fully embark on farming as a business? Definitely. And we'll see you next time right here on Shamba Shape Up. We have been around many farmers and asked them where they get their farming information from. This is what they told us. From the people of the ministry. You have to track, track, track until you get somebody to give you information. Over the radio, 
I can get for the old man. Workshops. <laughs> <laughs> All these farmers had mobile phones. And on the end of these phones is a new expert, the iShamba. The iShamba is Shamba Shape Up's information center who can SMS you the information you need. All you need to do is send JOIN to 21606. And you can get information anytime, anywhere, on your phone. It's amazing. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to receive all Shamba Shape Up leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up or simply text 30606.